I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today I'm going to show you various ways not to smash your fingers. For the first few tips, I guarantee you have never seen anything like this before. I cut some copper pipes to make my own armor. This covers 50% of the area needing protection. If you combine it with some of the tips in this video, maybe it is sufficient. But if you just want to cover the other 50% of the area, I will use this 2x4 to make a small device. Cut off one and a quarter inch. Drill two three quarter inch holes. Drill a small hole at the center perpendicular to the large holes. Cut in half at the center, making sure one side contains half of the small hole. Now, I put my thumb into the large hole and 75% of the area is protected. This should be sufficient for most people, but if you want to cover 100%, you can either use this armor to cover it, or use the other half block to cover it. I also cut some PVC pieces. The center has some cut to secure the nails. These can be used for very short nails, but if you want straight, perpendicular nailing, you have to use two fingers without the thumb. Like this, it may not feel like what you are accustomed to. Depending on what you are comfortable with and what the needs are, you may combine different protection shields with different finger combinations. Let's see what other things we can do. I went to a hammer museum in Alaska. I saw a sign, 10 ways to not smash your fingers. And I actually came to the hammer museum to see in the old way. So this one is magnetic on the tip. And it would be fed this way, right up this way, and then oh, yeah. push down, oh. and it picks up the tack, and then you hit it, and then push down, and then tack on the hit it. So that way you don't have to put your finger anywhere near it. Yeah, and then this one here, it's like an old-fashioned nail gun. Uh -huh. You fill this with uh, nails, and they go down there, and then you take a hammer and you hit that top. Oh, okay. So. Most people naturally start from mid-air, aiming at the nail from some distance. However, the longer the distance, the harder it is. Think about the professional golfer, how much time they spend on training to be able to control that golf club. So unless you are a robot, sooner or later you're going to hit your fingers. A lot of people don't want to admit they hit their fingers with a hammer, but I do admit it because I'm a fully human. However, if I had a robotic arm, I would modulate with three universal joints. Each joint has six degrees of freedom and is represented by a matrix. The multiplication of the matrices would determine the precise movement. You will never hit your fingers if you could control all the factors. Don't start from the mid-air to hit the target. Instead, start from the target and then freeze your wrist and the shoulder joint. Only use the hinge joint type elbow to back trace from the target to the mid-ear and then from the mid-ear to hit the target. Some of the following tips depend on understanding the two phases of hammering. Phase one, hitting a nail into the wood with lighter force, just enough that it can stand on its own. Our goal for phase one is to not injure our fingers. Phase two, you power hit the nail to sink it all the way in. Our goal for phase two is to not damage the surface. We start with the first component, the hammer. During phase two, you use power hits by holding the end of the handle. This provides maximum power. But during phase one, you want better controllability, so you should move your hand up towards the head of the hammer. The maximum controllability is to grab the hammer's center of gravity. Depending on your controlled strength, you should settle on somewhere close to the center of gravity to provide enough power. The second component is the wrist. There are eight carpal bones. Thus, if you don't have good hand-eye coordination, an unsteady wrist is a likely cause of missing the target. Wrapping your wrist with some kind of bandage or tape may help. The elbow joint is a hinge joint type and has fewer degrees of freedom. Usually, it is not the problem. If you can't control your shoulder joint's movement, you can steady it by pretending to hold something under your armpit. 
Now, let's move to the other hand. When holding a long nail with your fingers, the holding position is important. Your fingers can't be too close to either end. If you hold the tip of the nail and you are not perfectly on target, then your fingers will be smashed because your fingers are sandwiched under your hammer. If your fingers are too close to the head, the hammer head may bounce off the nail head and scrape your fingers. Although the hammer may not smash your finger, it could still be painful. So the best is neither at the very top nor at the very bottom, but to have your fingers keeping some space from the board surface rather than being against the board surface. In this way, if you are not perfectly on target, there is a higher probability that your fingers will be pushed aside rather than sandwiched under your hammer. If the nail is too short to hold with your fingers, or if you do have a tendency to hit your hand, you should use something like one of the following items to hold the nail. Cardboard or stiff packaging material. A clothespin or pliers. Or a magnet. If your fingers are not close to the nail, I guarantee you will never hit your fingers. During phase two, trying to sink the nail all the way in, when you may cause the most damage, put an object such as a cardboard box next to the nail. This way you restrict movements. Pre-drill the hole with a tiny drill bit before hammering anything in. This will also help prevent wood from splitting. Of course, if you have to do a lot of nailing, you may invest in a nail gun. If holding cardboard, etc. is too slow, you can buy a magnetic hammer. But note that all magnets lose their magnetism with repeated blows. So figure it into your total cost of the project. Finally, whichever methods you are using, you should try to focus your eyes on the nail rather than on the hammer. Similar to shooting for a goal in basketball, you need to focus on the hoop, not the ball. Good luck to your fingers. The 10 ways. What are the 10 ways to avoid? Oh, uh, that's just a promotional thing. That's all. Oh, oh, these, okay. these 10 hammers are 10 ways for you not to smash your hand. But how does this work? <laughs> this? Uh, that's a spring. You would line it up on the bottom, the, oh. ta the, the nail would go underneath it, and then you hit on top of it. It's a lot like this, but you actually okay. have to line the nail up first. Oh, you have to align the nail. But how do you, once so, you... So this, this part right here, uh -huh. it, this comes out and then the nail goes in. Yeah. So it's in the little cylinder and then you hit on top of it. But how do you remove this once it's nailed you just, you in? Just, well, you don't, it doesn't nail this in. You just lift it up. Oh, you just lift it up. Yeah. And how about this? How does this it's work? It's the same idea behind this one. Oh, These ones come, the, the it comes up, but you have to push it with this. Okay. And this picture, what is this? The thing? same hammer. Oh, it's so nail in. Yeah. Oh, I see. Nail in. Okay. Now I am. And, and th this is... So this one is a lot like this in the sense that back in uh, the uh, 1900s, 1800s, uh -huh. they, they would have their carpets tacked to the floor. Four, yeah. And then you untack it, lift it out, take it outside, beat it, okay. and then clean it and then put it back down. And uh -huh. instead of bending over to tack everything back down, uh -huh. with this one and this one, you would sort of... Well, this one you would roll and lift this level le or okay. lever, and the hammer would slam down. Uh -huh. This one you sort of lift it in and straight down. Straight down. And I actually came to the hammer museum to see in the old way. <laughs> Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.